Hi, I'm Mark Madison, the historian at the National Conservation Training Center in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. And today we have a longtime friend of NCTC and a very special guest, Karen <laughs> Hollingsworth. Karen is here uh, for an area conference, mm -hmm. which we're uh, hosting here, uh, which stands for Aquatic Resources Education Association. And she is here uh, as manager of the State Fish Art Contest. Right. And we'll get to that in a bit, but we first met Karen uh, as a wildlife photographer, particularly one who's uh, visited a number of our wildlife refuges. Yes. Uh, and in fact, we have a beautiful display of, of Karen's wildlife photography uh, hanging in our instructional West building. So Karen, welcome back. Thank you, it's great to be back. Well, I'm glad you got to revisit your photography. I know, I saw it again. <laughs> very it was, popular with the students And it was still here. there, I was surprised <laughs> and pleased. <laughs> we've enjoyed it for, boy, it must be about 15 years now. We've I had bet it. it's been that. Yeah since I had the exhibit here and you guys rec replicated it, which is great. Well, I thought we'd start with your wildlife photography <coughs> and then after that, talk a little about your, your current role and your mm -hmm. very exciting work getting youth connected to nature. But I, know. I thought because this uh, goes out to a lot of uh, refuge managers and wildlife biologists and so mm -hmm. on, it'd be fun to, to share some of your photographs and maybe tell us what we're looking at and, and how you got that shot. Oh, absolutely. Well, when John and I started photographing was in 1987. Wow. So we, it was from 87 to what? 2005. So a lot of years on photographing on refuges. And it was, I can't even count the number of refuges that we photographed on. And for this exhibit, we um, tried to pick, of course, a variety of images from a variety, you know, to get the variety of states and the variety of images to show what the refuge system has, the wonderful diversity that the refuge system has. And uh, is there a shot showing? There it is. The oh, there eagle. it is. There it is. A bald Our eagle. iconic one. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> and I'm trying, I wish I had, I'm trying to remember exactly which refuge that was taken. I think, well, you know, I actually don't remember which refuge we took that, but we added that, uh, again, just because it's our symbol of our nation and there's an awful lot of bald eagles and golden eagles yeah. on, a lot of, on a lot of refuges. We've used that one a lot. <laughs> Thank you for your generosity <laughs> oh, and allowing us to, you're well. to use it, but it's so iconic looking and uh, plus it's a success story. The bald eagle is one of the few species recently been able to take off the endangered species list. So that was, um, you know, very wonderful. Oh, I know. And I, I, when I go fishing in the mornings in Minnesota and there's bald eagles around and, and uh, of course they make such a un bald eagle sound, you yes. know, right. <laughs> that is, I always enjoy that. I mean, if they, if they sounded like a red tailed hawk, it wouldn't be any fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's much better that they sound like whatever it is they sound yeah, like. Yeah, like eagles. Like eagles, yeah. <laughs> it's hilarious. Oh, gosh. Oh, wrong button. There we go. There we oh, go. oh. This is this. this one really pops. This one is a Bosque del Apache, and I took it. Out. I mean, this is one out of gosh, I I don't know how many I had to click to take. You know, they were feeding in these fields, and they would fly up, and their epaulets. You know, they'd show their epaulets. I thought, oh, if I could just get a shot with them showing their, you know, yeah. all of them showing their epaulets, and, and I, I did, and I, I love that shot. It's uh, it's almost like an impressionist painting. I know, I think that's why I like it, <laughs> because gorgeous. it is, it is, it is, it is very impressionist. And you said that was from Bosque, Bosque del Apache? Del in New Mexico. Yep. And uh, one of my favorite refuges, and one of my favorite shots, that's, um, yeah, it really brightens you up, it gets you when you see it. Yeah. You kind of want to go with them. <laughs> I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is sort of just the opposite. This is a blind Ozark cavefish. Wow. And um, John actually took that one, and I'm trying to remember the name of the cave because I can't, and I wish I could, d down south. And, I mean, it's... Uh, it looks like it's stuck. I know it looks stuck, but I don't, you know, this is underwater. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and uh, <laughs> it's not stuck, right. it's okay, you know. And uh, it's blind, though, so you wonder. But no, and all, everything down there is blind. Wow. 
wow. you know, the fish, the, um, I think there's crayfish down there, a lot of endangered species down there. This, you know, this is one of them. But I thought uh, it's hard to get a decent, interesting picture of a, you know, some, and that small, I mean, it's not very large. Right, right. And it's hard to get, a, you know, just a little picture with a little fish doesn't do it. And so he did a really good job, I thought. That's gorgeous. Sticking it, in, sticking it in that crevice. We'll have to have you take some pictures of our blind cave spiders. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> same, a little uh, PR. <laughs> yeah, really, same, same deal. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the moose. Ah, uh, elk. Elk. I'm sorry, elk. 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 elk, 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 elk. Oh, moose this At Charles Russell. Oh, cool. Yeah. It's and you uh, got him bugling. I got mm -hmm. him bugling, and uh, this was down on the oh, Missouri. Is that the river that goes through there? But I've never been to Charles. Oh, uh, so I'm not sure. Great, a gorgeous area, and uh, I was after you know the elk, and so it's a close up. But uh, the area that it is in is you know along the braiding of the river and the fall colors. It's beautiful, beautiful yeah, place. Yeah, great backdrop. Now, yeah. did you shoot this from a blind of some sort or my car? My car Your is... Your car is a blind. Is it painted in camo? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you and I tell people all the time, the very best blind that you can have at a wildlife refuge is your car. Because they're used to seeing them? They're so... If you're, and they say, oh, you must go to, behind the gates to all these secret places. <laughs> and I said, well, yeah, you know, I do have that opportunity a lot of times. But mm -hmm. let me tell you, the best photography is on the auto tour route. You know, it's sunrise or sunset. It, that's the hard part. People don't want to get out there at sunrise. Yeah. And, yeah. Or, you know, you're out there. As soon as that gate opens, you're the first one there. And you, I have what's called the refuge crawl. And my car, I get an automatic, not a stick, but an automatic, and I put it, at the, and you just creep. <laughs> it's a refuge crawl. And they, you know, and then you can stop and creep a little more. It takes me forever. But that's where you get the best shots. Did you ever have to ask the refuge staff to open the gate a little early for you so you could get in there? And get in there and create? Yeah. <laughs> no, I know. I never have. I ne I've never done that. I've just, I want to do things that people, other people can do. Anybody can do a large yeah. majority of the images. Now the cave fish, that'd be a little tough. Yeah. But the majority of images that we take, anybody can do. That's amazing. And it's worth reminding people, um, yeah. you know, for many years, that was your primary profession, wildlife photographer. 22, yet, 22 years. 22 years, and yet you were always very generous in your permissions and letting us use your images to, to promote the wildlife refuge oh, system yeah. and the service. And we really appreciated that. Uh, well, I've always felt, I mean, the images are one thing, and that's, to me, that's the personal side of, the, of what I do or did. Mm -hmm. And even today, but it's the personal side is that, you know, the, that being out there and, and taking the images and so then you've got them. So now what? I mean, just, you know, I, but you all were very in, uh, generous in that um, the images that I took, I was able to sell too. So I was able to make a living. But what do you do? So now what? So to me, the most important part was then giving back. And I traveled the country for years with my exhibit, and I had um, PowerPoint and yep. did presentation. Let's go wild. Yes. <laughs> yes. You performed it out here. It yes. was a yes. huge yes. crowd pleaser. Yes. Yep. And uh, the more I could tell people about the refuge system, which a lot of people still don't you know, yeah. think it's a park. Yeah. Sure. And... Uh, so the more I could do, the more I could tell about the refuge system. That was my goal all along, was giving the, it was the conservation side of it to let people know that we, the refuge system, the most incredible system of lands, is ours. It's here. It's there. And uh, people need to know that, and they need to care about it. They need to, I mean, I can get a lot of things, but I mean, they need to vote for it. <laughs> they, need, they need to go that extra step to make sure that it's taken care of. And Very well spoken. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to some pictures. Yes. Oh, yeah, I can go. We need to get off our soapboxes. Yeah. Ah, well, this one. Oh, this is nice. This is very nice. Yes, and this is taken at, oh, gosh, I'm trying to remember. 
it's been a while. Uh, yeah, but this, this could be 30 years old. Yeah, old. but this is this was taken in the which I love the bottomland hardwoods, and folks fishing, and uh, I spent a lot of time in my poke boat, poking around bottomland hardwoods. One of my favorite things to do, and uh, this just shows the beauty in the piece. I mean, what a great place to fish. Yeah. Make that, me jealous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could. I, I should have uh, brought along the name of the refugees. Oh, these guys. <laughs> these guys are really funny. This is taken um, right along a road. People say, oh, you must have been in a blind. You know, you must have been to get this. No. They're, the den was right along a road in, on the refuge and just poke along and we have oh god one of them is you can see really muddy they were in the mud and they have great pictures of them playing in the mud and, and all of this sort of thing but these these two kits uh it almost looks like they're posing for you. i know they were <laughs> it was, they were you know it, it was really cool because they were posing i think actually and it was really fun because they uh uh yeah, I mean, it's the perfect pose. The light in their eyes is perfect. I mean, they're in the same, they're, they're both in focus. I yeah. mean, yeah, it was really amazing. Yeah, actually, they were posing. No. <laughs> they're stuffed. Yeah, <laughs> but it was it was a cool. And now, this, this is different. This is this is more of a habitat. This yeah. and uh, is an image that I did because mine, I always went, you know, again, for that more artsy, uh, look, this is in the uh, in uh, Nebraska, in the Sand Hills, and it I um, uh, just love the grasses, the two grasses. Must have been what the prairies looked like when the settlers first came out there. Oh, I know. Know. and the prairies, I tell you, there's nothing, you know, where are you going to go in the spring? Prairie, because there's nothing like the prairie. It's so alive, birds flying up everywhere, you know, doing their skylarking and it's it's an amazing place. One of my favorite places in the spring, the prairie. So not all your images have to have wildlife in them, no. even though it's at a wildlife refuge. You know, <laughs> because um, uh, to me the habitat's just as important as what's there. I mean, it, it, without the habitat, there wouldn't be any refuges. I think we're coming around to that view. <laughs> <laughs> it might have been a little different in the twenties and thirties, but uh, no. But the today, habitat's just is is so important, and it's. Uh, it's the basis. Oh, this one. And after having said that, we put up a beautiful wildlife. <laughs> yes, right. This Watching the news recently. <laughs> the sage grouse, yep. which, and this isn't when it was quite so in so much trouble. This is taken at um, in Colorado at, oh, what a name. I can see the refuge. Shoot. Rocky Mountain? No, it's um, up, up in North Park. It's, um, oh, shoot. Anyway. This is on one of their leks, you know, where they yep. where they'll display. And I, <laughs> I put up a blind. This is from a blind. I put up a blind on this lek. They told me where to put it, and I put it up. And then I drove my car down in the gully alongside the lek. So I'm down there, uh, <laughs> sleeping, and you know, and then these the sage grass are coming, making their burbling, crazy noise. And then at about three in the morning, I got out and crept <laughs> through them practically. It's what they told me to do. And got in my blind and waited for sunrise. And this was right at sunrise. Did and they see you when you crept through their legs? Or <laughs> well, they were, they were, it was different? dark. It was uh, just, they yeah. were just aware there was something creeping. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed harmless. <laughs> yeah, I, I was harmless, you know. And I guess I gave off a harmless energy. No, they... I, you know, I'm trying. I wasn't like walking through sure, them, sure. but the, again, there were a couple there, but they weren't that interesting then. They yeah. were just starting to get into it, and then sun came up. This is one of the best images. I've I ever love seen. that. The sun came up, yeah, and the, the guy did his thing, and I was like, "Oh my God, that's awesome!" That was really one of the. I got a lot of you know with them doing their thing all around, but this one was the one that. That, uh, if we ever have a sage grouse stamp, that should be it. I think so. <laughs> I definitely, I agree. I vote, my vote. This guy, John, went up to um, on Kodiak. 
went up to the refuge up there and I was supposed to go with him. And then we had, we were either doing our book or a calendar or something and uh, stuff came up and I had to stay. So he had to go by himself. <laughs> Hardship. <laughs> well, actually it was, it was a little scary because he was in this little cabin out in the middle of, on Kodiak mm -hmm. and the bears are there. You know, f fortunately there's a lot of salmon in the river right. as you can see. And so they weren't terribly interested in him. However, the grasses are so tall there. They were taller than him. Huh. And he had to walk down these trails in these grasses that are up here. And, you know, you'll walk along and all of a sudden you'll see a half-eaten salmon and you're going, yeah. uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bear's been here. Yeah, he said it was really kind of scary. He wished I had, you know, we could have yeah. watched each other's back. But um, Did he say how close he was to this particular... Kodiak bear. <laughs> well, no, it was a, with a 500 millimeter lens and a 1.4 converter, so a 720 lens or so. So he wasn't that close. He was here. I think he was in the cabin. He the, he was in his cabin. He climbed up on the roof. Ah. So he's up on the roof of the cabin. So he was safe. <laughs> <laughs> good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So it. Uh, yeah. Did you ever have any close calls when you were doing wildlife photography? No. That's I never right. did. I, 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 uh, no, I, I never felt scared or in any danger or anything. And, and, you know, I was around a lot of stuff, but I'm pretty, um, accept, you know, accepted. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty careful, very yeah. careful and, um, very quiet. <laughs> Maybe that's the key. Maybe that's the key <laughs> or noisy if need be, but no, I never had any close calls at all. Yeah, I think that, oh, these oh, guys. Now we're moving to a different part. What of a hoot. This was in Hawaii, uh, Kilauea Point in Hawaii on the island of, uh, it's not Honolulu. Uh, Oahu? No, Kilauea Point is Ki Kianai? Kia, is that, well, no, that's in Alaska. Anyway, <laughs> Kilauea Point is wh where the lighthouse is. Yeah. There's a lighthouse there. We this just got the top of that lighthouse. <laughs> no, the lighthouse has a, a round globe. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, and you got red, that? Yeah, and apparently it had been taken down and replaced with a newer one. Oh. And so this giant round globe is down oh, in the fun. archives where, where I failed to meet you this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so I know what you're talking about. And they do have a very historic lighthouse. There. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. And they have this area where these uh, lace on albatross come every year around. Yeah, every year some of them come to breed. And they are hilarious. It was all like, I could not keep a straight face. I was just back and was sitting, you know, around. <laughs> and this is some of the young adults doing their mating, getting yeah. to know each other rituals. You know, they'd lean up and do it. And then down there, they're going back and forth with their beaks. And I mean, it's hilarious. They're making these crazy noises. I had the most fun. It was just hilarious. I couldn't, I got some photos, not as much as many as I wish, but I didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> you had a good time. With the I had a great time. Yeah. It is a neat refuge. Oh, it was a wonderful refuge. Oh, and here come, this was one. Now, here's a, an icon for the Fish and Wildlife Service refuge system. Yeah. <laughs> Our first species we protected. That's true. Yeah. That's true. And this is, I think, is really cool because it, uh, you know, the adult and the young. And that's, 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 I, you don't see many shots like that. And I thought that was pretty neat. And I wish I had another, it's another pelican shot that I have too that I love. Um, that was taken up at, um, uh, oh, it's in my mind. Good grief. <laughs> this was a long time ago. It was ago. a long time ago. Photographs <laughs> last longer than our <laughs> and, and they're labeled on the, the exhibit. <laughs> yeah. I've got them labeled. But up in um, Oregon, Klamath. And it's, it has four or five pelicans and looking kind of bedraggled and one has its plumes all stuck out. And I figured you could, I used to take it where you wake up, you know, all fuzzy and everything <laughs> and you get all tidy and then you'd go out like the one on the <laughs> left side. Right, what, and, but now it's just the opposite. You wake up looking boring <laughs> and you go to where it's all out and looking cool and then you go off. So it. It's like time lapse. It's timeless. It's timeless. I love it. It can go either way. So it'll always be in vogue. <laughs>
Well, he's, we're big fans of Pelicans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a yeah. pretty one, the final one we have. The final one. This is taken down in Kofa, I believe it is, down in uh, Arizona. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the few places where you don't have contrails of planes flying through. So you can do this as night photography. You point your camera at the North Star, and then you open up the shutter. And about three hours later, you come back and wow. close it. So those are star trails. That is neat. And in the north, if you're pointing towards the North Star, they go around the circle. Otherwise, you know they go, they'll go just across. But if you go to the North Star, that is amazing. Isn't that cool? <laughs> yeah, I didn't know really that cool. at the time either. I learned that, but yeah, yeah. Well, these are beautiful. And oh, thank you. If anybody you. does come to NCTC, they're all in our instructional West building. <laughs> Love it. I'm so glad uh, we're, it's we're, still there. We're, they're a permanent exhibit um, that we're really happy to house. Uh, but you've moved on to a new job. I uh, have. Starting, when did you start as state fish art? Manager? I've been doing state fish art for probably just about five years now. Okay. And managing that. And it, uh, it's in the, we're in our 19th year now. So wow. I kind of came in near the end. But I've done... Uh, it was always done Wildlife Forever, and they started it. As actually, the cool part is that it was actually started by a fifth grader. <laughs> well, tell us what it is for those that might not be familiar with the State Fish Art the Contest. The State Fish Art Contest is a nationwide contest, K, kindergarten through 12th grade, and it's uh, science integrated with art. And yeah, there's science that you learn. There's, we have a curriculum, Fish On called and the kids learn about the fish their habitat their behaviors and their conservation needs they learn that and then they go on to the second part where they take that knowledge that they've learned and they take the the a state fish and they create art and they submit it to the contest March 31st every year that is neat yeah. And then who judges? That? We we have several panels of judges that judge different um, aspects of it because we have in every state we have the four grades groups, K through three, four through six, seven through nine, ten through twelve. So you're judged with your peers, right? And um, so we have different judges. We do a preliminary judging, and then there's judges that come in and do the a uh, lot of the national judging. Mm -hmm which is uh, there's the top 12 that's uh, the top 12 in the nation out of all the first place. Because wow. uh, every state has those four grade categories. Yeah. So all of the category, all of the ones that won first place in their category are then compete in the uh, top 12. And then we also have a writing aspect, which mm -hmm. we, we call Fish Make You Smarter. And the kids write them. Hopefully a, true. Yeah, yeah really. <laughs> or fishing. Yeah. Makes you smarter in my case. I combine, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> makes you able to, to learn. Um, one, pa one side of one page, and they can write um, an essay or a poem or a story or an interview, anything. They can do anything on that one page. Those must be fun to read. They are, and I read every one of them. All 5,000 and so Are there on. any that stick with you that were particularly yeah, unique? Yeah, there, so, there are some that are amazing stories about them and their grandpa. Or, um, you know, just ones. Some are about how they learned to really appreciate fish and didn't know that much about fish. I've learned so much from those essays. They're, to me, just as important as the art. Because that, the essays is where I see the spark of conservation. Yeah. It's where I see, oh, yeah they've got it or they're getting it and uh it, it's uh it's a worthwhile thing now there it's are connecting you to nature which it is, is it's absolutely major, connecting major. them to nature and it's showing that they are it is doing that and that's what it's all about and that's why that's why i do it i love the art i love the essays i love the kids and i love the fact that we're connecting them to the natural world and that they will then hopefully care about it same the same thing I've always done. Yeah, yeah you hit just a new medium. It's just a new medium, <laughs> and it's uh, it's a lot of fun. It's uh, um, I think it's really making a difference. And we you know we get five thousand or so entries every year. We get every state in the union. A lot of them are coming uh, internationally. 
off the internet. They find us on the internet. That's great. Yeah, and we get Malaysia and Uzbekistan and Russia and countries in Africa, and it's amazing from from all over the world. So we have an international category. So what happens to the winning art? <laughs> ah, the winning art, first place in the state, in every state, we mat and cover, and we take it to our expo. We have an expo every year. And uh, we've been doing it with uh, FLW uh, at their World Cup. And uh, we display it there on the Wall of Fame, we call it. Mm. And it's so popular. Uh, the Fisher, you know, all the people, the 60,000 people that come to the Cup uh, see it. And the, uh, all the first place and the national winners and the winning essays are all on display there. It sounds like a great program. If people wanted to find this contest, where would they go online to look for it? Statefishart.org. That's easy enough. It's easy enough, and it's there, statefishart.org. And all of the information is there for 2017 because we're doing that contest now. Great. And, uh, yeah, I love doing State Fish Art. Well, Karen, I can't thank you enough first oh. for all the work you've done for wildlife refuges, now connecting you to nature. You've, you've actually helped us carry out our mission <laughs> for the last 40 My years or so. Pleasure. So we're most appreciative, My and pleasure. it's, it's great to see you. I can be the Pied Piper. <laughs> and I appreciate you taking out some time from the area conference to come speak oh, to us. Well, I appreciate your letting me do that. All right. Well, thank you, and thank all of you for tuning in. Yes. And uh, have a good afternoon. Bye.